vision not just to create challenging professional theatre, but to use this as a platform to inspire and bring communities together. Theatre and culture build identity. With theatre and culture in our local life, the community landscape is more vibrant. Local life is enriched. We believe that the benefits of theatre should be available for everyone. Our Theatre for All programme has removed financial barriers, giving disadvantaged people access to the theatre free of charge. So we were told that we'd come here and have a Christmas meal and then go and watch A Christmas Carol. Our aim is to make live professional theatre available to everyone and use that experience for positive change. Theatre can be transformational in young lives. Our academy is now in its fourth year and we continue to build on our vision of bringing the best performing arts tuition to the heart of the Cotswolds. We work hard to make our academy as inclusive and as accessible as possible. Discounts apply for parents with more than one child. Our bursaries help support talented children from less affluent backgrounds. The Academy creates a fun and challenging environment where children can build friendships and develop key skills not just for theatre, but for life. We are also able to provide real opportunities for students who wish to pursue careers in the arts. My name is Harry Apps. I am currently playing Marius in Les Miserables in the West End. Barn outreach and learning programmes engage with thousands of people. Our free workshops support the drama curriculum in local schools. Singing and musical theatre workshops in community groups and care homes have helped address issues of isolation. Our Song for Sirencester project in aid of mental health charities brought our community together in an unprecedented way. We've collaborated with many charities in the region, including the Churn Project, to support individuals dealing with the barriers to finding work. Since working you and my life's changed. It's given me some purpose, given me an interest, some confidence I was lacking prior to all this. The Barn Theatre played a pivotal role in the town's 2018 World War I centenary celebrations. Who could forget our record-breaking human poppy? Our live streaming work on the annual Advent Festival helped thousands engage and take part in Sirencester's Christmas festivities. In these times of uncertainty, we strive to keep the community together. The theatre may be temporarily closed, but our commitment to you goes on. Even now, our amazing costume department are helping the NHS by making scrubs for frontline workers. We've used our technology to build a free live streaming service that provides much needed community news and entertainment for all the family. Broadcasting every day to keep us all connected. We are not just a theatre. We are the bar. Uh, a little bit of excitement on the run this morning. I'm out trotting around the fields and uh, came across uh, one of the gates which is normally shut and it was open. I thought, oh, that's a bit weird. And then there's some cow poo everywhere. Trot on a bit further, come around the corner. And you're like, whoa, what see dilly didos? You chaps aren't supposed to be here. A whole herd of cows and their calves. Quite aggressive we so and so's as well. Surrounded me, surrounded poor Oaty. Oats didn't like it at all. Anyway, so I cut the run short, hoofed it back, quick telephone call to the farmer who I believe is off to try and sort it all out at the moment. So uh, yeah, run cut a little bit short, but not too bad, still about 8k done. So that's a good start to the day. And uh, just remember, we're in it together and I've got it done this morning. So I want to hear what you're doing to get it done this Wednesday. 
Monday morning, start of another week. Hell yeah! That was a fabulous run this morning. Now, it's Monday. Are you battle ready for the week? That's what Nims would say. And one of the things that I do to help to get ready for the week is I, I, I give my thoughts a voice and I simply write them down. I give myself 20 minutes, half an hour over a cup of coffee on a Monday morning and I write a plan for the week. I get them out of here and I make them more powerful by writing them down. And then I have that list, that plan above my desk, the poof there, and I keep referring to it all the time. And in that plan, I, it's not hour by hour, it's a simple breakdown of what I would like to achieve. And that keeps me focused for the week. So, it's Monday, it's really important to make this week count. Don't forget, we're in it together. So let's get it done, shall we? Woo, ah, that's the run done. Pretty windy out there this morning. Uh, that was hard. Not the run, but the motivation to get out the front door and to get it done. Lying in bed, just thinking, oh, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna skip today. Let's give it a miss. Uh, get up and have breakfast with the children. But no, uh, really important. I got up, I got out, and I got it done. And it wasn't the fastest run ever, but it's gonna set me up for the day. Because for me, if I start to skip things, that very quickly progresses to skipping two days or three days and then I drop out the habit. So for me, really, really important that I just keep it going as often as I can to be involved and to be present. So remember, we're in it together and we've got it done. Oh, the wheels fell off on that one. Don't know why. Got about 5k in, boff, no energy. Wheels, oh, totally bonked. P pretty much crawled my way home over the last three or 4k. Mixture of running and walking. But yeah, that's okay. I don't really care. I'm in the great outdoors, that's fab. And go home, grab myself a smoothie or something like that. Get some energy back in and evaluate what happened. And that's the key thing. Find out why it happened and don't let it happen again. But hey, we're still here, still sane, still strong. In it together. Whoa, energized. That was a great run. And still pumped, still buzzing after last night's cool conversations. If you didn't see it, uh, swipe up for the link. And uh, you know, lots of stuff that our special guest Nims was talking about. And one thing that I really picked out of it is when he was talking about his fitness. His fitness is something he doesn't even consider. He literally slips it in his pocket and pulls it out when he needs it. And that made me think. And that's talking about controlling the controllables. And by doing so, and doing so well, it leaves us enough bandwidth to take care of those uncontrollables that come flying in when we least expect it. And that's a really good professional and personal learning there. Control the controllables. Have it so you can slip it in and out of your pocket. That portable solution. So that's the key learning. We're in it together. Thanks, Nims. So hell yeah, definitely a hell yeah day. And you know why? Well, a couple of reasons why. Firstly, that run has really lifted me. I mean, properly lifted me. Bit of a funk after yesterday afternoon. That has filled me with joy. And secondly, it's Thursday. And you know what that means. <coughs> that means <coughs> tonight, 1800 British summer time, Cool conversations again. Super pumped by this one. We've got a special guest, our first ever guest, Nims Die. So we're gonna be talking about his project possible last year, what his plans for the future are, and what he's doing during lockdown. The guy's a bit of an inspiration. So, cool conversations. Check it out on the Barn Theatre and on my own social media channels. In it together.
My mate Kenton has done some extraordinary things in his life and he's pretty hilarious as well. We're going to talk about climbing, we're going to talk about sports, hot topics, and we're going to merge all that together for an entertaining 30 minutes. Well, it's Thursday, it's six o'clock, it's got to be time for cool conversations. Now, we've taken a slightly different slant this week because Ewan can't be bothered to be here with me. But doesn't really matter. I got a much better person to co-present with me. And at some stage in the next few minutes, my good buddy, my real buddy, unlike Ewan, is going to come on and help me with the show. But firstly, I just want to make sure, how's everybody doing? It's another week of lockdown, but that doesn't matter. It's about being positive. We're in it together. And that's how we're going to get through things. Now, the special guest tonight... Is, is somebody I'm super fond of. He is the face of SAS, Who Dares Wins. He's Mr. Adventure himself, none other than my buddy, Ant Middleton. So, if technology is working, Ant, have we got you? I am here, correct and present. How are you doing, buddy? Good to see you. How are you doing, Kenton? Uh, yeah, awesome. Thanks, Chief. Awesome. You too, you too. I noticed that you've, uh, you've, you've done the buzz cut. Absolutely, mate. Absolutely. All of my children have got it. Um, no. You know what? The reason why I've done it is because I, I went to give, uh, give my 10-year-old son a haircut and I absolutely bodged it up. So I had to shave his head off and I thought it was only fair to shave mine. And then my three-year-old son was like looking at us too. So I grabbed hold of him and quickly shaved his hair. So we're all good to go now, mate. Uh, I tell you, I, I'm going to have to do something with mine. It's going to be a bit out of, out of control. But I mean, so More of aerodynamic up the mountain, mate. Oh, is that what? Oh, is, is that what it is? Maybe that's what Nims did. No, our mutual friend. Yeah, we had exactly. Nims on last week. I think so. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, what a legend guy. that boy is. Great, great boy. Yeah, no. So, so, great well. Now, I, I, I don't know. We're not going to touch upon your uh, special forces thing too much. But were you in the SF with him, or uh, how, how did that cross paths? How do you know Nims? Yeah, yeah. I was in the. Uh, I was in the special boat service with NIMS. Um, NIMS passed selection, I think, two years after me or a year after me or something like that. It was a couple of courses after. And I just clicked with NIMS from day one. Um, you know, he there was quite a, there was a bit of a language barrier there because uh, NIMS was, uh, you know, still learning. And obviously the learning curve in the special forces is like that. So um, yeah, I like to think that I, I took him under my wing a bit and, um, you know, just made him feel comfortable within the squadron and within the organisation. But me and Nims are very, very close friends, um, and we still are. I had to chat to him last night. Oh, did and you? And we still are to this very day. Did yeah. Do you, yeah. you get any tips about, about how to have cool <laughs> conversations? Listen, I've said that I've already, I've already uh, been up every risk of tension. I know, I know, I know, I know the score. But um, no, we were just chatting about family life. Um, he's got a new book coming out. Um, yeah, I you saw know. that. That looks really so, cool. Yeah, no, he's uh, so I'm just giving him tips. It's strange because you know, obviously, in the media and the literacy world, um, I'm sort of out there, so uh, it's nice to be able to sort of give back and see the people coming through. It's almost a re repetition of selection when uh, he passed selection and he came through, he's, he's almost coming through now in the media world and in yeah, the literacy yeah. world. And I'm sort of um, helping him, yeah, helping him find his feet. He, so. He's on a big riser, which is which is really impressive. So, you've said a couple mm -hmm. of things already, which which really gets me sort of interested. I, I watched your uh, Everest Diaries um, on sort of Channel 4 playback the other day. And um, you, you're saying how you took like NIMS under your arm. Now, mm -hmm. I'm going to put it out there. I think behind yeah. your sort of facade, I see somebody that is actually super nurturing, caring. And I get the impression you just want people to be the best versions of themselves. I, I, I saw it on the SAS thing. I've seen it on your Everest. And now you're talking about NIMS in the same way. Is that, is that a fair reflection on who you are? Yeah, that's a style I think people don't get to see is, is you know, the behind the scenes nurturing. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a doting father. I, you know, I love my big family, man. I love my wife, I love my children. And I'm a people's person. I, I actually really like seeing people succeed. Now, it puts a big smile on my face. When I see a success story, it makes me smile. When I see someone that I know doing well, it makes me smile. But it makes me want to help as well. 
if I can help in that sort of area, in that field, then, um, you know, I go out of my way to jump on board. So, yeah, I've got a massive nurturing side. I've got a massive heart. But what I'm very protective of is, is, is you know, being taken advantage of and, um, uh, you know, and sort of people using it for ill intent. So I'm a bit savvy in that way as well, where I can fit between the two. But my primary uh, sort of um, personality is very nurturing, yeah. I mean, I, and I'd say, I mean, I, I've, I'm really sorry. I only watched it for the first time the other day. Your Everest, Extreme Everest. I can't, I can't, I kind of knew how it oh. ended because I, I, I was there. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you did. <laughs> and I, I you thought it there was, with me. I, I thought it was really good. I really <laughs> enjoyed it, and it brought back some strong, strong memories of base camp that year. And if the, the mm. viewers don't know, we both shared a base camp at the same time, didn't we? Yeah, we did. You know, we spent a uh, well, hell of a lot of time together, really. And the whole documentary was just meant to be, you know, Everest with Ant Middleton. It's meant to be like a travel log of, you know, through um, all the way from um, sort of uh, base camp upwards, but also, you know, the, the trek to base camp from from Lukla to, to, to base camp. You know, I've done a big sort of travel log and how the Sherpas and how the porters lived. And that was meant to be like a like a three or four episode series. And then obviously what happened sort of in the last week when uh, on summit, on the summit rotation, when it just everything just went against us, no matter how hard we try to fight through, that made it just a documentary in itself. So it went from, you know, Everest without Middleton to extreme Everest without well, Middleton. I, I mean, honestly, um, to Chief, I remember waking up that morning you left base camp because you left a couple of days before me and there was a raging mm -hmm. storm. And that night, there'd be like thunder and lightning. Yeah. And this is in the tent of base yeah. camp. And I was thinking, Jesus. Got up in the morning, and yeah. I was expecting you guys to be drinking tea in the mess tent, having come back down. And you didn't. You forged on. Mm. And, I mean, yeah. we all thought that was a little bit ridiculous. But, I mean, eventually it paid off for you. Uh, well, I don't know if it did. It was one of those, Kenton, when, yeah, when I went up there during, you know, it was... I get excited with challenge um, and I get excited when I get put out of my comfort zone. Now, just climbing Everest was out of my comfort zone. But, um, you know, I'm a, I was in mountain troop in the military. I've climbed, you know, a few mountains. Um, you know, I love the outdoors. I, I, I deem myself as a very capable person. But also I, I know my body because I've pushed my body so far. I know my body. And at the point when we hit that storm, it was a, we were at the crampon point. I remember this team turning around. There's quite a few people turning around, but and I, and it does sound ridiculous, but that spurred me on even more. What that done? It reminded me of selection when you're doing the first four weeks of SAS and SBS selection or special forces selection, and on the hill face you just see people. They look at the peak of the mountain, they and they turn back around and they 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 quit. You know, and it just boosts you on because you think, oh, that's one less person on the course, blah, blah. And when they came back down, but coming back down, that's the, the same sort of buzz that I got. Um, and I thought, let's just commit to it. You know, I, I, my body wasn't at its limits yet, and um, we committed. But when we committed, I remember getting halfway up through the uh, Kumbu Icefall and thinking to ourselves, well, we better turn back around because it's getting, like, ri ridiculous now. But by the time we got to the point where we said, let's turn around, it was quicker and up. easier to go up to camp yeah keep going up to camp one yeah. so i sort of committed 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 got to a level where it's like right like, this is ridiculous now you know to the point where it was, it was hard the, the weather it was just yeah i mean it was hardcore. proper hardcore i, I hardcore. remember waking up that morning and we're going geez <laughs> i hope dower ed you know the cameraman ed uh and, and yourself were all okay mm, i mean yeah I mean, obviously well, yeah. Were. Um, but it was it was oh. impressive, I and I, I, I got to ask you about this because um, you're father of what five children these days? Yeah, I've got yeah, two young correct. children, and there was something else that five. you mentioned that is getting harder. I mean, I don't know how you do it with five. I've got two, and it's really hard. <laughs> um, I mean, the home. Are you guys homeschooling? I'm just a glutton. I'm just a glutton for punishment, mate. I just, I just... Are, are, are you guys home? Uh, uh, get, get my words out. Are you guys homeschooling at the moment? Yes, we are. That's why I just kicked my daughter out. Um, no, yeah, we are. We're homeschooling. And how's um, that going with one five? Of my, one of my sons is last year primary school, and he's already passed his exams to get into um, into the secondary school that he's uh, that we've applied for. So, which he's been accepted. So, he's just doing uh, 
two lessons a week now or sort of two two half days a week um english and maths just keeping up on those um my daughter is first year of secondary school so she is like quarter past eight to quarter past four Oof. she's logging in and doing it then i've got a three-year-old son and a four-year-old daughter who are just absolutely running wild that's the uh, one that's uh, you've got them all doing push-ups outside <laughs> that you have haven't you they're, they're all have, there, listen ah. i've got i've got to tire them out i've got because they are at, the moment they wake up they're like that they're either going shoo, 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 and then you know but then when we get them to sleep about seven, half past seven, um, it's then time for the two elders. And I, I, I've got that feeling. Half nine, ten, it's it's like, like bedtime. You're like, oh, show me the beer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's and then something always so, comes up. So, so, so you, know, you kind of are the modern day Mr. Adventure. Uh, how are you coping with lockdown? I mean, what, what's it? I mean, I'm struggling. What's it like for you? I mean, you're a guy that's out there. You said you've got a love for the outdoors. You love this. You love the mountains. That's clear. You love being engaged with people. How are you coping with lockdown? Yeah. Do you know what? It's a bizarre one because everything that I'm doing goes against everything, everything that I am. So when I mean that as well, you know, I'm a socialite. I love being around people. I love, you know, I love, I love watching people. I'm fascinated with how they think, with how they act. Um, I love being around positive people because it positivity just radiates and, and you oh, can bounce off each other. Um, I love being outdoors. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. Um, I love being outdoors. So, yeah, it, it, it was very hard, tough to get my head around. You know, very, very tough to to sort of sit back, especially with with everything that I've done in my life. You know, I've, I've always tackled he everything head on. You know, I've never sat back and done nothing. So every sort of blood cell in my body is telling me to go up and do something about it but obviously the thing to do about it is to, is to sit back and but I'm also very good at controlling what I can control and letting go of what I can't and that's what I'm doing at the moment I'm controlling what I can control I can control what goes on in, in these four walls I can control um, keeping my children happy and keeping them in a routine I can control the way I think um, I you know not use a lot of people are stuck in this time in this in this you know three, four, six, eight, ten weeks, however it may be. And it's very important that this time just isn't dead time. That you're 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 keeping your mind stimulated. You're thinking about how you, you know, once all this these measures sort of um drop, how you're gonna hit the ground running. So, you know, at the moment I'm thinking about books, I'm thinking about more TV, I'm thinking about more mountains, believe it or not, with uh with NIMS and Kenton, we need to talk I was going to as say, well. We've we, we got to talk about um, big boy climbing. We've talked about this for nearly <laughs> two years now. Proper big boy we climbing. We have. So what's it yeah, going to be? Listen, if, I'll if, be on your back then, mate. Don't worry climbing, about that. Come on, come on then. You've you got the big muscles. So what's big boy climbing going to be? I think we're going to have to look at the Eiger, aren't we? I, I think you what know, we should do, um, here we go. We, the, the, the viewers, we hear it here first. Why don't we try and get NIMS involved? And we look at yep. the, the Eiger, the, if people don't know, the mountain in Switzerland. Uh, I know what you're like. Uh, you're not going to be settled <laughs> on the North Ridge or the South Ridge, are you? No. Nope. It's arguably <laughs> you, the, you know. most, yeah, the North Face of the Eiger, the Eiger Wand or the Mort Wand, the Death Wall. That's what you've got up here. Yeah. I can tell. I got well, it's one of those that. where you, have, you can tell that. Um, you know me. So listen, you know, you, and, it's, and it's bizarre when you get to spend such sort of without even realizing it's such quality time with someone now like you do like we do on Everest when we're isolated together ultimately and we're all we're all out to set the the same goals it's amazing how you can sort of uh get to know someone very quickly like that but mine would definitely be like it probably was for for, for Everest it's like you know let's bite off more than we can chew as long as you've got the right people around you and that's what really settled me on Everest you know I had I had you at my disposal. I had Ed, my cameraman, who was you know summited a couple of times. He was a he was a you know a very capable mountaineer. I had Dawa. so you know not only was I happy with with my own capabilities, but you know when you surround yourself with with people like that, it just boosts you even more. So uh, Iger, it is. Um, it, it, it is incredible it how if you surround yourself with positive, engaged, motivated people. 
then all of a sudden, I, I'm a firm believer, that team is capable of greatness. And I think we saw that on Everest. There was a group of us there. There was Sid. Remember the American guy? Uh, there was Sid and Gary. Yeah, we all, great uh, guy. Uh, ben was there. We were all sharing base camp. And I think the positivity, if you could bottle that, we'd all be like gazillionaires right now because that was, that was a melting pot of inspiration. It was fantastic that year. Oh, absolutely. You know, one million percent. And, you know, I remember coming when I came off the summit um, and you were the first person that I saw. You know, or, or didn't see about, the case might be, oh, I can't see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or didn't see us like that. Yeah. But, um, uh, top was, tip, if anybody like, climbs Everest, keep your goggles on. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, But do you know what happened there with the goggles? Everyone... Um, I had the big Oakley goggles, you know, the reflective ones, yeah, yeah. the uh, mirror ones. I had those, and um, I put them on, I think it was in Camp 2 or Camp 3, and I said, these are the ones I'm going to summit with. And Ed was like, you can't wear them, man, because it will just reflect off the camera, and it will it yeah. will, it will, it will, come back. At, yeah, so he, 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 I think it was Dawa or Ed that said, oh, you won't be needing them anyway. And they gave me some some crappy old goggles to put on, right? So um, I remember, you know, obviously on, on the summit day, it was all clear at the beginning, and then – Obviously, when it all kicked off, it was it, it for me to get off that mountain. The, those goggles are just useless. They just froze up because I didn't have the proper seal, etc. And I can just remember thinking, "Wow, the the position that I put myself in for TV was, you know, was bloody absolutely <laughs> a stupid idea." And I can just remember thinking of these goggles, these crap goggles, thinking they nearly cost me my life. Well, the, the, the issue you get with goggles is because you've got an oxygen mask on, they sit over the That's oxygen it. mask and you get the airflow coming up, which because it's so cold, it freezes on the inside. Just, I mean, goggles are a big you know issue what? on Everest. You've got to get them All right. All types of nightmare. And, 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 and the guy that was before me coming down the, the, coming down the Hillary Step, the one that fell um, and was upside down, um, he, when he was... When he, went to climb down he was and he wouldn't let go of the ridge and his, his shirt has pulled his goggles up and his eyelashes were frozen together he couldn't see he couldn't even open his eyes and his his shirt was digging at his eyes to get the ice off and then he looked down and he sort of just let go and i was just like yeah. that no that's when we were stuck up there and i was just thinking to myself oh my god so yeah um next time uh, and this is a bit of advice for anyone <laughs> ignore the tv just yeah. take your kit that you're used to that you know work and um, that works and, uh, and uh, yeah, well, that, don't, I, I don't think that anything to, less. That, that links back to what you're saying earlier, control the controllables and your kit. I mean, you, you clearly know this from your special forces day. You get the kit that works, or I do at least. I get the kit that works and I stick with it. And, you know, the, the new kit comes in all the time, but new doesn't always mean it's better. Better. No, uh, 100%. And I, I was like that in the military. Yeah, you know, like my boots, I'd have, you know, a certain pair of boots that I knew that I, I could, if I was doing 25, 30K that day, they're, they're the boots that I'd wear. Then I'd have my camp boots, I'd have, you know, my camp kit. And, oh, 100%. I'd never go with just buying boots. new are, are boots. They, are they the same ones you had on um, on Everest, the, the pink ones with the, with the fluffy bits? Are they, are they your camp boots? Yeah, and, no, they're my weekend boots. Uh, they're my weekend ones. Yeah, I got yeah, 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 yeah. I bought that. I bought them especially for, for Ben. Mm. <laughs> So I, I've got, now I've not read. So yes, yeah, I've, I've not read this, but a client of mine um, uh, sort of brought this to my attention. I think you're one of your books. You're talking about Everest, and you say you got to the balcony. Now, I presume this is mm. on the way down, and you had a, a deep-seated feeling about jumping off. Is that right? Yeah, no, that was that. What? Yeah, that no, that was that wasn't on the balcony. That was on the that was on the Hillary step. Oh, on the step. Um, yeah, that was on the step because when that it was it was bizarre. It was a bizarre moment um, because as that guy fell off, um, he was literally as he fell. He, he, as you know, he was five meters down. He was he was upside down, so he had the rope where his harness was. He had the rope that was pinning him between his legs because he was upside down and he couldn't he couldn't right himself. Um, and he he was he's literally going in and out of consciousness. He's trying to get his oxygen off, and they tried to rescue him about three or four times with no joy. And I can remember seeing him there after about half, after being stuck in one position for a couple of hours, got to wait for the queue and then wait for him to be rescued. A couple of hours? As I looked down at him, I saw, yes, two hours, yeah, stuck there for two hours. 
yeah, two hours. And as I stuck down, yeah, it's horrendous. And as I looked down there, I remember looking down, seeing the guy pinned still up, upside down. And, and then I looked around as the white out subsided every now and then, as it went down and the ridge went around on the hilly step, two other climbers had been blown off the ledge. Um, and, it's, and one of them was nearly Ed. It was the two climbers after Ed. So Ed went and then the, 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 uh, the wind or the, uh, the edge collapsed and two climbers went for, they were upright. They were dangling. One of them was trying to work his way back up to the ridge. And the other one was just, just there crying. That's all he was doing. He was yelling and, and crying. And I remember looking at that guy who was upside down and the two guys that were trying to make their way back up to the ledge. And I remember thinking to myself, Ant, you are not getting off this mountain. You're, you're, you're done. And at that point, when I said that, a sheer sense of panic sort of engulfed me. I remember thinking to myself, Ant, you're dead. You're not getting off the mountain. You're done for. Um, and it's that moment that I thought to myself, do you know what? Just, just unclip and jump off. Jump into the abyss because just, just jump into the abyss because you know you don't want to be you know frozen up here as a monument where everyone will go past. Oh look, it's Ant Middleton. Let's let's grab a selfie. Well, I, I, um, I, I, so, I can always uh, high five you when I come past <laughs> on, on subsequent ascents. Be like, hi Ant, how you doing? <laughs> Bring you a beer up. You imagine every, every year you come up going, all right Ant, all right Ant, how you doing? <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, the, so, the yeah, I did, I did actually think that. The, the reason why I ask you that because um, I, I often climb like frozen waterfalls with these things. And when I'm super, super comfortable, I'll be hanging there and I have this, I suppose it's a mental thing about just letting go, just let go. And I actually, yep. I, I really have to force my inner psyche not to let go. To and that it. comes from like a comfort level. I'm so comfortable in my environment. I just, I think that's what it is. So I was curious if it was the same thing on Everest, but it sounds like maybe it was more... No, it's the opposite. But what I am with heights, I'm not scared of heights. Um, and it's bizarre that you say that, um, Kenton, because I have the same feeling. I'm very comfortable with heights, um, believe it or not. But when I'm up really high, I have the urge to jump. It's weird, I, have, isn't it? I, I don't. Yeah, I don't want to get away from the edge. I look over and I'm really confident on the edge. And the reason why I step back is because everything inside of me is saying jump, jump, jump. And it's not, you know, and it's just because, you know, that's what vertigo is as well. People that are scared of heights are either scared because they're actually trembling because it's like so high or they have the urge to jump. And every time I get to a certain height, which is quite daunting, I want us, you know, everything, everything's telling me to jump. Like you want to let go. Every yeah, time, yeah. jump, jump, jump. But, um, but yeah, yeah it's, I, I, it's I, must I, be... I, I don't get it on an edge as such, but it's when it's only ice climbing when I'm super comfortable. Uh, and I'll be there with a client on grade four or five ice, and I just, I just let go. It, it's, it, yeah, it's some psychological thing. Mm. I don't know what it is. It's, uh, it, it's a bit odd. So listen, apart from the big boy climbing, that obviously you and I, and we try and get that that idiot Nims in. Um, the good thing about that is you're all, <laughs> all three of you are smaller than I am. You're, all, you're, you're all vertically <laughs> challenged, so I, I could do the hard moves and just leave you scrambling behind me. Listen, um, you're going to have to do the hard moves, mate. You're going to have to do so the hard other moves. Other than the big boy climbing we were going to do together, what, what, what have you got on your radar? Because I know a lot of us have a hiccup with lockdown and some of our plans mm. have been put to one side. I mean, what, what's on, if you can tell us, what's on the agenda? Yeah. For, uh, for you know what what I, what I like doing, Kenton, is is and uh, as everyone's seen and everyone's witnessed over the last couple of years, um, I like versatility in my adventures and and, and in my in my uh, in my. That's a, that, um, that's, a, that's a bit of a big word for you, that versatility. I know. But you, but you I can't know, spell it, can you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Get my daughter in. Try <laughs> I'll wait till I see you again. <laughs> yeah, I can run quite fast. I've done a lot of running these days. Uh, I, I think I might be able to outrun you. I definitely can't outfight yeah. you. Look at these guns. Woo! Um, there you go, mate. <laughs> oh, no problem. Um, so, yeah, the um, I like to, to really mix up. Um, I always have a calling to the mountains. You know, I'm always, that, that, that's why I sort of call, that's my outdoor calling. But, um, you know, I like to do things now. Like, you, you, you see the mutiny that I've done, you know, um, I've done 4,000 miles on an open wooden boat, um, reenacted re the mutiny on the bounty um, when they got um, marooned in, in their boat. Um, so, you know, I love the sea as well. So I think I think a, a sea adventure is calling. Something, um, you know, Christian Slate, um, um, what's his name? Robert Knox Johnson, uh, it, Guy Blythe. No, it will, it, it, it will come Burnham to me, Lucas, it will yeah. come to me. Um, 
it Alex will come Thompson. to me anyway. No, 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 no. You want, you want to it, will, it, will, it will come to me. You should team up with Alex. Alex is the guy with Hugo Boss, you know, the massive, he's done the Vendee and stuff like that. That guy is... Yeah, the, yeah, the Vendee is that, that boy, really interests me. That boy's an animal. Mm. You see the speed, mm. single-handed, that he, he, he races that boat. Mm. It's incredible. I mean, it's so, serious, something that to do with the sea is definitely calling me at the moment. I find, um, really, but, I find it really scary, the power of the, of the sea. I really struggle with it. It, it makes me feel about that big. It's well, it's, it, do you know what, Ken? It's the same being up there when you're in that zone where, listen, the only person that can rescue you is yourself. It's the same down there. You know, when we've done the mutiny on the bounty, um, even though we had a safety ship that was out of ear view, um, out of um, eye view, and out of um, out of uh, sort of out of out of view, so it didn't burst our bubble. Um, we remember being caught in a storm. And they couldn't deploy the safety team because the storm was so raging that they would risk their own safety team. And they couldn't pull the ship um, alongside because we had a wooden boat and it would have smashed into it. And so we had to ride the storm out. I, tell, so really, I, I, I don't think it really I reminded me of you, both ends. Everything you do, you have a storm involved. Everything. You, I mean, your storms <laughs> on Everest, you've got storms on the, on the, on the bounty. Mutiny, I mean, yeah. yeah. But um, it, it's one of those where... Um, yeah, I'm, I think the sea's calling me at the moment. But um, do you know what really intrigues me? And it, it might sound a bit bizarre and a bit, you know, out there, but I'm very much like that, is, you know, what's up there? You know, up, up, you know, penetrating the, uh, the atmosphere. and Yeah, space. You, 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 you want to team up with Richard really then, Richard Branson. Or, or Elon. <laughs> yeah, well, go go and speak exactly. to Elon Musk. I'd love to get Elon Musk on this. He'll be, be amazing. Be, yeah. Have, have you, have you so I, I think it's interesting up there. No, I haven't seen it. Uh, I, I send you a link. It's it's a podcast. Mm. It's it's pretty incredible. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm quite a big uh, quite a big Musk fan. Yeah, I am as well. I am as well. Yeah, I'm, quite, I'm a very big Musk fan. In, in, um, so yeah, dude. up there, mate. Let's see what's up there. So, Explore so, up there. Let's... Well, I mean, what's up there? It's infinite, isn't it? It just goes on. Mm. For, uh, I mean, it's I can't even get my head around it. That that's a, like a base camp, nighttime base camp, looking up at a star sort of <laughs> chat. That one. That's yeah, it is. Central blow your mind so the 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 mutiny the, the bounty mutiny thing that you made reference to i was looking at some pictures the other day you all came off that fairly emaciated emaciated yeah, yeah. What, what what's what's ant's fitness regime i mean you're a big guy you're pumped you're you're, uh -huh. you're stacked you come uh -huh. off you come off something like the the four thousand mile mutiny with i'm assuming malnutrition to a degree etc yeah how do you get back back to full strength back to full fitness do you know what what i do the key to what to my recovery and to what is i don't think about things too much you know um when i came off the mutiny i lost four stone Jesus. Um, we're on 350 calories a day there's a the before and after picture yeah i lost four stone just over four stone be good for rock climbing. and <laughs> exactly mate i'll be like running. always a positive oh, like a always a positive exactly mate exactly um and i'm when I flew home, so I got off the mutiny um, in the morning and my wife was due that day, due to give birth to who wow. now is Bly. Um, so I phoned her and we were meant to do five days R&R &R in Bali, you know, just to, to see a site, to, you know, to recover um, with food and water. And my wife called me. She went, I'm due today. I was like, oh, fucking hell. I said, right, okay. I said, look, listen, I'm going to Bali. Excuse the language. Um, <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm going to Bali for five days for R&R. For &R. <laughs> she was like that. Get home yeah, well. now. <laughs> so I found myself on a flight the next morning. So I got off that morning. The next morning, I was on a flight home. And two days later, my son was born. So you got home in time. So you I got home did. in time. But people do say to me, Ant, how did you recover? And I honestly didn't have time to think about recovering. I didn't have time to think about any of that, even though... I remember the the, the, the plane journey um, the plane journey home was absolutely horrendous. I was flipping out, flipping out. I was I was asleep in the, on my seat and this little boy ran past me and I sort of woke up and I grabbed this little kid <laughs> and I said to him, I said, What are you doing on my boat? <laughs> and he sort of looked at me, he went, Rah! he ran off to his down that so obviously I followed him and he ran to his mum and said, oh, I've got really got to apologize. So I just 
you know, grabbed your son. And I said, I'll just explain the situation. She's like, it's absolutely fine. Thank you for coming to explain. Um, so I was in a bad way, <laughs> not only psychologically, but physically. But when Briar was born, it was just like a million miles an hour. You know, he, he was, um, he's our fifth child. So um, back to work, back to, you know, press, back to being a dad again. I really can't tell you how I, how I recovered, but what I do do, Kenton, and, and this is what I do do. I, I don't I don't diet. You know, I just eat healthy. Everything that I do is um, is sustainable. I've got to make sure that what I'm doing now, I want to be doing in 10, 20 years time. Whether that's the workouts that I do, whether that's the, the food that I eat or, or the liquid that I drink. Um, so I really lead, lead a sustainable lifestyle. So when I come to doing Everest, when I come to doing mutiny, I don't really have to change it up too much. You know, I just live, uh, I, I eat as healthy as I can, not all the time. I don't diet and I just try and keep it the same as much as I can. But because, I think that's what Nims was saying. We had Nims uh, on last week. He was saying being battle ready. And I, I think uh, what you're describing is the same sort of thing. And I, I think uh, I'm kind of similar. I try to keep everything at about 80% the whole time. Yeah, right. I try to eat healthily in a sustained way. And Jazz, my wife, and I say it's future proof in ourselves. So it's not one like, million percent. Yeah, it's no fads. It's 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 no. It's this is what is best for us as individuals. And what's good for you yep. might not quite work for me, and vice versa. And it's knowing yep. what's what's best for you. And it clearly works for you. I mean, you're looking as stacked and as big and as motivated as ever. Uh, and it's like that. It is. It's like having that bone. It's like always having that bone ready. And then if you've got an Everest coming up, or if you've got uh, an SAS, then you just add 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 a little bit of meat to it. And that's all you do. And then, but you just make sure that, that base level is 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 a good, correct, healthy one. And then you can just add and add to it as, as you wish. And that's what I do it's, with SAS Who Dares Win, for example. I know that I'm going to have you know um, athletes on. I know I'm going to have marathon runners. I know I'm going to have Iron Men and and women on it. So you know you, you've got to think to yourself right. You know, when I run up that mountain with weight on my back, I've got to make sure that no one catches me. So all I do is I just, I just up my game in, in that area with, with weight and, and so on and so forth. And with Everest as well, it was just a case of um, just putting in the miles. You know, it's not, not nothing fast, just a slog, just getting the mind prepared for those long days. And it's interesting. So you talk about your, your, your TV show, the SAS thing. Is, is that ever intimidating? You, you get all these different people on and they've got different skill sets and they've got different problems because I've only seen a few of the shows, but it looks like a lot of mm. people bring baggage onto that show. So you've got this whole you know, mingle of people and attitudes mm. and skill sets, like I said. Is that intimidating for you and your team at all to have to deal with that? Yeah, it can. I wouldn't say intimidating because, you know, they've entered our world. You know, they're all volunteers at the end of the, at the, end of the day. They can, they can come and go as they please. Um, and they've got a point to prove to us, not us to them. You know, so we've always got that advantage over them. Um, and if, if they don't want to be there and if they're showing the wrong attitude, then we just, we just get rid of them. You know, we just we, we, we concentrate on and spend and put our time into and our experience into people that want to be there. So, you know, if, if people are, aren't screwing the nut or aren't playing the game as such or, or are there for the wrong reasons, then, yeah, it's not intimidating. We just literally just go, right, listen, we're not going to waste our time and experience on you. Um, and we just get rid of them. So, yeah, no, I really enjoy it. And what I enjoy is the aftermath of it because I know some people really come there because they've really got issues that they don't know um, how to conquer they don't know how to manage and I will I will apply the pressure in an old school sort of brutal sort of tough love manner and I'll just say exactly how it is face your demons or let your demons uh, destroy you it's one or the other and you know a lot of people they face their demons and come out um come out the other end a better person well it's, it certainly seems that way and you know obviously you know we got the mutual friend in you know the, the beautiful lovely victoria vp yeah. who was on everest with me and now i've not yeah. spoken to her Love about this, but Love yeah uh, uh, i'm super fond of her mm. uh and mm. i've not spoken to her about this but after everest we both know she entered a, a period of you know deep personal issues and uh, i think some psychological issues perhaps but then, since your Sorry. show, you know, she, she, she always did extremely well on your show. 
um, which to me looks incredibly hard. You break people down. You find out the why, which I think yeah, is, exactly. is, is incredible. Yeah. And then VP seems to have burst out the other side, almost a completely different person. And she has mm. just mm. risen to the point that she is now. And it's so yeah. good to see. And I wonder mm -hmm. how much of that is due to your show. Or due to well, you know, I team. speak to her quite a lot, and I speak to quite a lot of the the uh, the recruits or contestants afterwards. Um, and it's just give them a purpose, and and not a purpose what they can just take from the course, but a purpose of who they are, a purpose of right. I didn't realise I could I could push myself this far, but I'm capable of a lot more. Or you know, I knew I had to face that issue or face that demon and I didn't want to, but it was shoved down my throat. So I was forced to face it. Um, and it's those small little victories. It's not, it's, of course, isn't going to change your life. That's down to you as an individual to change your life. But what, what my course does, it, 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 it can change you as an individual. It can make you a, a better person by, by being honest with yourself. And I think that's where a lot of people fall short is that they're, they're not honest with themselves. They know they've got the demons. They know they've got issues, um, but they're not willing to face them and they're not willing to be honest that they have them. And the moment that I, I, I identify that and um, I shove it down your throat, you're either going to break and then you're going to realise you've got them or you're going to realise, acknowledge that you've got them there and then and deal with them. So either way, you know, the, the course is, is really designed to, 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 to make you a better person. Well, listen, buddy, um, at, at some stage, we've got to bring this conversation home. And um, I, I think what you've just say, said there about being honest with yourself is, is, a, is a fantastic point to, uh, to, to sort of perhaps round this up, because those are very powerful words. Be honest yeah. with yourself. Give your thoughts mm -hmm. a voice. And, mm -hmm. I mean, we all have our inner demons. Uh, I mean, I know Absolutely. I do. And, 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 and when you are honest with yourself, then all of a sudden you start to push that out and radiate. And there's nothing mm. wrong with being different. There's nothing wrong with being who you are. And um, mm. I think those, almost more than anything else you said today, and I think those mm. are very powerful words. So, yeah, I've got to... But when you're honest with yourself as well, Kenton, when you're honest with a situation, when you're honest with a person, when you're honest with yourself, um, the problem is right there in front of you. You know, if you're honest with it, it's there. And when you're honest, you can you can you can um, you can acknowledge it. And when you acknowledge it, then you can put the steps that you need to proceed or you need to break it down um, in place. Yeah. So when you're honest with yourself, the problem's there. Right, honest. I can take ownership of that. Execute what needs to be done and move on. Um, but honesty is is the hardest tool to use. You know. Um, you open up that toolbox and honesty is there, but you know, it's the, it's the, it's, it's, it's the, it's the most useful tool to use, but it's the hardest to use. Um, so therefore we put it back a lot of, a lot of the time when all you have to do is pick it up, be honest with yourself, boom, the, the problem or the issue is there. You take ownership of it and, and you start breaking it down. Well, I, I think in our current environment and with lockdown and all the uncertainties and everything going around us, I think you've probably muttered, the most influential and important words I've heard in the last four or five weeks. So, and mate, it's such a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, Kenan. The, the honesty, Thank the you. toolbox, I'm going to take that home with me today mm -hmm. and I'm going to start to implement that myself. So, buddy, mm -hmm. listen, Thank you so much. I can't wait to share a beer with you the other side. Mm. Or perhaps when we come down from the Eiger together with Nims, and I'll take you to Definitely. my favourite bar in Grindelwald in Switzerland, and we'll sit there and we'll look at the north base of the Eiger together and we'll chink that beer. And I salute you, sir. Thank you so much. Kenton, and just a final word for you, and which you wouldn't know because um, I've never told you this, but you are a great influence and... and and a, a, a great um, person to look to while I started on Everest. And you, you filled me with so much confidence without even knowing it, just by observing what you, what you, what you do up there and, and how you act. And um, I've always wanted to tell you that over a beer, but I thought it was time to tell you now. And when I first saw you, when I came down, well, when I didn't see you from, um, <laughs> from um, the summit to Camp 4, um, it was like seeing a loved one and, and, and a family member and um, you, I could see that you were really care, caring and uh, 
really worried about me and that really put my mind at ease and it honestly it helped me get down the mountain so thank you well that's what bodies are there for man always thanks G Kenton. big guy thank you mate yeah, Bye -bye. see you soon be strong wow i don't know about you guys but for me that's that was something special so a big thank you for ants uh for coming on the show and there was a number of class gems in there for me when he was talking about being honest with yourself being the honest version of yourself wow that's such a powerful thing to give your thoughts a voice that's definitely something i'll be taking away with myself uh, after this so from me, I just want to say thank you for everybody tuning in, no matter where you are in the world. A big thank you once again for the Barn Theatre. That's what we're doing it for. At the end of the show, please, if you are inclined, hit the donate button. We're trying to keep the Barn Theatre open together. So one last thing, we're in it together. Let's get it done together. And I'll see you all next week. Same time, same place. Hopefully without you and again. Be cool. Wow, whoopsie dilly dinos. And tonight, today, you got a tight white t-shirt on. Yeah. Like, wow, come away, man. <laughs> Look at this little gun there in comparison. It might be multiple beers. Yeah, it will oh, be, hang on. Mate. Big guys here. Sorry. Have fewer. He bites his fingernails. Only just, mate. He bites Only his just. fingernails. I, I, I found the weakness. <laughs> <laughs>